So Sherlock Holmes consulting detective. Um, I'm trying to remember how many other ver. Yeah, so there's th at least three other versions of the Sherlock Holmes games that I actually have on my shelf back there. Uh, the Thames Murders and other cases, Jack the Ripper, uh, Carlton House and Queens Park, and then this one, which I've not opened yet. And so that's what tonight is about. I decided I'd spend a little bit more time. And I wanted to play something instead of just open it. So I was like, you know what, let's do a two-for-one stream. Get that going. And kind of relax on this Friday night. Just bust into it. So, for those who don't know, uh, this game, it, it's not as much of a game as just a murder mystery solving uh, almost escape room style in that you're reading a lot of clues and you're trying to find the solution for it over um, as you complete complete the story. Uh, so if you plan to play this on your own, the ma primary spoilers will be when I get to the end and read the actual answers to everything. But you're trying to basically solve the case and beat Sherlock Holmes at his own game, being that you solve it with using the least amount of clues, potentially less than he uses, answering all the questions. Uh, yeah, we didn't even look at the back. Uh, so this is from Space Cowboys. It says it plays one one to eight players, uh, ages 14 and up, because sometimes the theme, murder, stuff like that, that a lot of the Sherlock Holmes cases deal with, of course. It says 90 plus minutes. You can stretch it, you can rush through it. It all depends on how fast you read, how many clues you go through, of course. And kind of says we should, ex for the contents, we should expect a map, some booklets, newspapers, directory, and rule books. And a rule book, which is, of course, right here on top. This is going to be a lot more wordy and less visual than most of the games I've shown off on here. But I will be reading off the clues as I get to them. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to hit the introduction and then look at the rest of the stuff. So it says, Welcome to the streets of London in the Victorian era. The fog is spreading. Crime runs rampant. And fortunately, you're here to lead the investigation. You take on the role of members of the unofficial gang of the Irregulars. Street children who help Sherlock Holmes in solving mysteries. Most of them choose to live in an abandoned factory, not far from... 221B Baker Street. In each case booklet, some of the irregulars are referred to by name. When available, Watson accompanies them, so don't be surprised if his name crops up as well. Some of the irregulars you'll, you'll see mentioned include Wiggins, the eldest of the irregulars and the group's leader. He is an adventurous and clever teenage boy with a cheeky smile and the gift of the gab. Simpson, a stocky Irish boy with red hair who when not working on cases for Holmes, makes money selling matches on street corners. And then Tinker, one of the younger irregulars. Tinker is a murdlock, someone who searches through river mud to find anything of value that has been discarded or fallen from boats. He cleans and repairs items and then sells them on the street. And now you can add your names to the list above, because you too are in the Baker Street Irregulars. Follow Wiggins out into the gaslit London streets to begin your adventures. Good luck. So then it goes into the object of the game. Uh, it tells you about the contents that you should expect to find, what the map looks like, uh, the directory, uh, what that is, the list of informants, newspapers. And it actually tells you that the newspapers are basically the cases where they're used for each case. So for each case, you'll have at your disposal the newspaper of the day in which you will sometimes find ads or articles setting you up on new leads. So you'll find a lot of clues in the newspaper first and then expand out from there using the directory matched to the map uh, because the directory will have names of people you might find in the newspaper. And then that director will tell you where that name can typically be found, like a certain address or workplace. And then you can go search on the map, verify if that's where you want to go, and then you can also use that then in the clue booklet. Decide, okay, I'm going there now, and then look up the next clue. Talks about the, the case booklets and how they work. 
and then how scoring works at the end of a case, which is typically enclosed in an envelope so you don't see the answers. So you decide when to look in that if you feel you have all the answers, compare it to how long Sherlock would have taken. So it talks about game setup, game overview, end of game, scoring, uh, special rules. So campaign cases one through four are separate and can be played in any order. So I'll be doing case number one. Uh, you'll only need the, the current days in the newspaper provided for that case to solve it. Cases five through nine are related to case 10 and should be played before the latter, preferably in chronological order. Uh, it's important because those newspapers typically add up or sequential in some way. So occasionally for the later cases, you can refer back to previous newspapers, which was somewhat used in that same style with some of the other game versions. Uh, use of letters during your investigation will uh, be asked to circle specific letters, which you can do behind the list of informants provided in the box. Those letters are specific to each case in the independent way and give you access to some of the booklet leads as soon as you uh, as you can always reread a lead previously followed if you reread a lead that asked for a circle letter that you did not have at the time and now you have that letter you can immediately read the new text and will not cost you additional lead so that also has some tips for beginners which I'll probably leave out because it has been quite a while since I played this game and I'm sure several people watching this may not have ever played the game so we'll make sure everyone is on the same page on how to play and how we should advance within the case so that's going to be critical to be, to be left aside and used as we play so put the rules right there uh, the color of for this is all kind of a green hue so unfortunately that does make this a little bit harder to read like even if it wasn't so much lighting glaring off of it right now that that white on the background of that green is a little hard to read for some and then the brown around it is not very contrasted so bear that in mind if you do decide to read this now i'm sure the text inside is easier to read but just if you care okay so we have this directory which i want to find the map to show you how that works together uh, and then we'll go over all the pieces that we found. So, uh, let's see. We have informants. We have the different newspapers. Okay, I think this is the map. Yep. So let me move the other stuff real quick. Now this map is kind of, is just paper. Like the majority of the stuff that's printed on. But they do have some good stuff on the inside kind of like a booklet you open Baker Street or regulars open at first see some pictures of who they named and then you open up the map of London which it almost all fits on screen so it says it's London it gives you different sectors of London uh, so you'll have stuff like EC WC NW SW so those are critical when looking up clues because they then re they kind of condense it down, making it easier to find an address. Now you have parks and then you have all these little numbers. Now I'm going to switch the view. Hopefully I can show off this map a little bit closer detail and show you how it looks. So you'll see a lot of these buildings have bubbled numbers. So we may end up looking for an address that is, it might give you a street address, which you'll have to look in all, all these lanes. It might give you a, it'll probably give you the number. Sometimes it'll even reference the NW. So that, those all come in handy. And then sometimes we'll talk about, depending on mode of transportation, how long it takes to travel between certain sectors. Well, thanks for dropping by, Chris. I appreciate it. Yep, enjoy your dinner. I hope, hope everyone is doing well and that you have some great family time. 
Okay, let's take a quick look at the directory. This seems to be cocked a little bit. No, because it's on the edge of the computer, that's fine. So London directory, let's show off how this works. So it's a listing of most of the characters you'll encounter within different clues. And then there's like some clues may reference just a certain category, like maybe they were blacksmith or whatever it may be. And then you can look basically up that profession or type of store in here and then find the options under that. And then, so like I kind of mentioned the postal districts is how they have it divided up like the Northwest and such. So it's Northwest for NW, WC, West, Central, East, Central, Southwest, and Southeast. So it says each address in here next to the names is going to be, uh, you'll, how it states it, because it's five areas. Each area contains numbers which correspond to the addresses. So each address in this directory is a number in a district. So pretty straightforward. So if you're trying to look for someone, it says, if it says 12 WC, that's West Central, number 12. Uh, it says you'll also find a number of locations in the directory corresponding to districts E, S, or Q, P. These locations are not used in the game, but can be used in expansions. So in a, in a way they've found, uh, they, they've made ensured they can expand on this release additional cases using the same map and directory which is really cool how they can do that but again this everything you need is provided in here except maybe some pen and paper which is helpful so as you can see it's all alphabetized maybe a little hard for you to read but it's like gives you a name number letter sector so it's pretty extensive because of all the cases, all the newspaper stuff. Like this would be, in theory, the the like a old school phone book directory of the town in, in full area at that time. So then, like at the back, instead of it just being names, and then it goes breaks it that down by category: be it uh, banks, churches, clubs, booksellers, docks, inns, etc. And so, instead of, if you don't know a name, you can go look for their profession. So, uh, I guess I didn't say, uh, I did say it's Box Space Pack Cowboys. Copyright is apparently 2020, so it came out last year. So, this is, I believe, the newest version of the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective series. Which, being the fourth one I got, and it shows four right here on the box makes sense that it was just last year and okay so let's take a quick look at what else we got um so we have in the list an address of his, of informants who we get to look at i'm gonna try to make this easier for y'all to read it may not focus completely but we'll try so list and addresses of an informants uh general kind of picture of what they look like uh, it kind of talks about where these informants can be found, what they generally do. Kind of like uh, the librarian here, he works at the library uh, to be consulted for any encyclopedic research. So it kind of gives you, not, not necessarily a tip, it just kind of gives you a guide to when you might talk to them. And so we have 10 different ones on that, on the back. Uh, the player a circle that indicated letters during your investigation. So like I said, we'll be doing this case one, uh, the Curzon Street Kidnapping. So we'll look for that name in a moment on the case files. Uh, but it looks like uh, there's something you're, you might be looking for. Maybe you need to either get all the letters or a certain number of them. Maybe it spells something. I don't know how that comes into play because I have not seen that part of this style uh, used in the Sherlock Holmes yet. 
but we'll see what it does. Okay, and then we have a, a stack of newspapers like we talked about. Now, before I show them off too much, I don't want to show them all off because they represent the different cases. So I'll, once I pull the case out, I can be like, okay, it's going to say use this date of newspaper. I'll make sure to pull that one out and I'll really go over it as I'm playing. Uh, let's see. So we have case booklets. As you can see, they, they're pretty decent size booklets. Uh, probably not a bad idea to switch back to view so you can see the full thing. So this is the whole stack. Room. We, of course, will not need them all. We'll just be needing case number one, which it says right on the front. And it also has a date on it. So that's an easy way you can reference the date on the newspaper to the date of the case to make sure you're using the correct newspaper for the case. Uh, now it was probably a little bit, oh, that's, I just saw this art on the inside back, because you saw I slid this out because it's more like a big uh, box sleeve. So this is the bottom of the, bo the box that was inside the sleeve. That's really, the way they've layered that artwork and use the outlines specifically is I, I like at least how they've done that it's not super bold or vibrant but it's it's very subtle but very detailed at the same time which is you don't see a huge amount like it's sometimes it's either really in your face or it's so subtle there's not much detail so i like what they've done with it and it really fits the time period uh, kind of very muted, not over-the-top extravagant 